the presentation I'm trying to share? Yeah, no, I can't. No. Um, let's do that. S send me the send me the PowerPoint or the presentation. I'll share it and we'll try to uh, you know fix it later. Yeah, now I see something. Okay. And now? Oh, now I see it. Yeah, good. That is okay. great. Okay, yeah. good. I will join you. <laughs> yeah, please. Okay, so uh, just uh, go ahead, start. Let me change. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so can you hear and see us? Yes. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry for the technical problems for some reason. I find it a bit more restrictive than before. So, hi everyone, and joining our uh, presentation today. Uh, Panos and I will talk a little bit about the coding challenge uh, that we propose for the student cluster competition. So, first of all, who are we? Uh, so, um, uh, Panagiotis Adamidis is the group leader at DKRZ. He has a PhD in parallel algorithms for the couple simulations and also a diploma in computer science. And I'm a computer scientist. I recently got my PhD in heterogeneous computing from the University of Hamburg. And I also have a diploma in engineering in computer science. So what is Levante? Levante is the supercomputer that you're going to work on. It is currently on place 74 in top 500. It currently has like 10 petaflops. It has CPU and GPU nodes. So the CPU nodes, each CPU node has each uh, two, uh, two AMD Milan's CPUs on it with 128 cores. And the GPU nodes have four NVIDIA with uh, A100. It is currently used for climate simulation only. So what is ICON? Um, this stands from icosahedral non-hydrostatic and the first part of the name, so icosahedral, is the shape that you see on the left and it's um, a shape with 20 faces and 12 vertices and we use that to project, um, project it on the sphere, which is the globe that you can see on the right side of the screen. Um, we need this for getting the resolution right. So each triangle is then divided to a sub triangle and so on until we get to the right resolution. Um, it is an Earth system model and simulates both physical, chemical, and also biological processes. And we use it in the coupled atmosphere and ocean model. Yes, so uh, ICON is used for both numerical prediction and also climate modeling, and it's currently implemented in Fortran and OpenACC. Um, it is also used in weather services and academia. So at the moment, the DWD, which is the German, German Weather Service, it uses it for operational forecast. Also, there are several um, 
national projects and international projects, as the one that we are currently working on, the World World, that uses ICON to get high resolution simulations. And the goal would be to get to 1.25 kilometer resolution over the entire Earth, which would be a great step ahead. Also, uh, ICON is used in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is the ICON Nations, a United Nations body, which uh, uses ICON just to not only to assess the, sci the science regarding to climate change, but also uses information from ICON to define their strategy in terms of regulation. Um, what are the future plans? So going excess scale means that we're going to need to be able to use heterogeneous platforms, which you know that are made from both CPUs and GPUs and maybe FPGAs and other uh, computing units in order to get to the goal of a great uh, resolution. And for that, we have to refactor a little bit the existing code. There is an ongoing process of modularization and librarization that will try to convert ICON from a monolithic application to several services that will connect, uh, connect pieces together. Our contribution to this is have um, actually to increase the performance portability of the model. The performance portability is defined uh, by Pennycook in the article cited here for an application A and a problem size P and a series of heterogeneous platform that we applied for, it's a harmonic mean of the efficiency of the application and the given problem, which means that, of course, the efficiency can be computed differently. It can be time efficiency or memory efficiency or whatever. But uh, here it means that um, if one of the heterogeneous platforms are not supported at all, the performance portability is zero. And at the moment, with Fortran and OpenACC, we have platforms where the code is not portable because we don't have Fortran compilers to, to compile for Intel GPUs, for instance. And this is what we want to address in, in the future versions of ICON. So what are we currently doing with the projects that we propose for the student cluster competition? So the need for high resolution, um, you understand now why it's needed. Now, what is the big picture? So in computing, um, a high resolution simulation, uh, many informations are taking account for. So in the, the solar radiations, the cloud, the precipitation, the currents, even the um, uh, salinity level from the water, um, also the contribution of the hum humanity uh, into all of this. And uh, from this, I can build a model that can uh, estimate uh, both weather and also climate. Our piece of code here focuses on the clouds and on the precipitation that uh, can be associated with the, with, uh, with the clouds. And uh, the, the code is called microphysics, and um, it has to look at the, the six states of water, so cloud, ice, snow, rain, vapor, and graupo, and their interactions. So from cloud, you can get to snow, um, then from ice, there can be a transmission to also to snow. So all the possible and valid physics processes are mirrored here uh, via um, arrows, and the code uh, implements them um, as as transitions. Uh, for four of these water shapes, so ice, snow, rain, and graupel, the ones that have umbrellas, uh, they can also precipitate. So we also compute the amount of precipitation that falls on the ground starting from one um, input state. Uh, what you can see here is uh, a cloud simulation that was performed a few years ago uh, in a process uh, together with the uh, uh, Z. And uh, here you can see the western part of Germany over a time frame of 24 hours, where ICON estimated the cloud migration around Julich and also uh, data was gathered in the centers uh, from the ground and was compared against what ICON predicted, and the results in the end turned out to be very precise. And what you can see here is the blue surfaces that show from now and then are the, the, the rain that will possibly precipitate, 
And also the pink surfaces is the cloud ice that you can see uh, it was computed by, by this model. Um, also, um, in a future um, image, so here we look at the southeast of Germany, and we see similar uh, estimates of rain and uh, ice. What is interesting to notice here is that um, here uh, the, the code used a very high resolution. So there were three domains starting for, from um, the 600 meters resolution and then went down to 300 meters and then even to 150 meters. So the precision of the estimates was amazing. And the goal would be to, but this was only over Germany. This is to mention, if we want to go globally, that we need more computing power. And the goal would be, as I said, 1.25 kilometers um, globally, which is still difficult to compute with the, the current code. This is why we need heterogeneous computing and uh, powerful supercomputing, exascale supercomputing, actually. And this is part of your task. So to help us more or less migrate the code to uh, and make it more portable, I guess. Again. OK, so the task is to parallelize and, and optimize the microphysics code as a standalone module extracted from ICON. So we ported the Fortran code to a C++ implementation that you should have access to. If not, please let us know via Slack. And from this uh, C++ implementation, we ask you to uh, parallelize it using directive based programming. So OpenMP or OpenACC in order to target different platforms and, of course, optimize it uh, as best as possible. So how will we work? So half of the teams will do the OpenMP implementation, half of the teams will do the OpenACC implementation. And we sorted alphabetically the, the teams based on the names, and we came up with this table. So you have to look up the name of your team to see exactly what uh, approach you should follow. So either OpenMP or OpenACC. I think this uh, table will also be added to the wiki page if it's not added yet, so you can check it also uh, after this meeting. As a very, very short intro to the OpenMP and OpenACC, so for the OpenMP part um, is a huge directive that we can use. It's the Pragma OpenMP target teams distribute parallel for SIMD, and this will ensure that the code um, will be parallelized and it can run on the GPU. So target, the keyword target, make sure that the code will be offloaded to the device if there is one at a runtime. Otherwise, the code will be executed on the host. Teams uh, keyword uh, will instruct the compiler to create uh, a league of threads. Initially, each team will have one thread. Uh, distribute will associate a part of the loop with a specific team. Uh, parallel will fork the threads in each team. So uh, we started with one thread per team and now we have more, uh, more threads per team and we start the execution um, in parallel. Uh, for um, ensures that the iterations of the for loop will be executed in parallel and SIMD of course uses extended registers and uh, AVS and uh, vector level parallelism. In order to use this big directive, you also make sure you have to make sure that the data is ported on the device um, as well. And for that, you need something like OpenMP data directive and um, any different combinations of arguments. Similarly, OpenACC has this huge uh, directive, similar to the one described above. The parallel keyword means that if, uh, the execution will start on the device. Uh, and loop will describe the type of parallelism. So it can be either team level, uh, if we configure the gang, uh, thread level for vector, and vector level for obviously vector. Similar to OpenMP, the data has to be accessible from the device as well. And for that, uh, Pragma ACC data will ensure the data is being copied to the device. The repository is at GitLab, you should have access to it. Uh, again, please let us know if you do not have access to it. It has several folders already, and I will want to quickly run through the repository and let you know what exactly you see here. So it has a coding section. So the folders uh, core, IO, and implementations contain mostly the code. So core contains the physics interaction, what you saw earlier with uh, the transitions from a water species to another, 
uh, I mean, the valid transitions, uh, all kind of helper functions, thermodynamic functions, and so on. Everything is already implemented. The IO folder contains the, the reading and writing uh, NetCDF files. This is what we're going to use um, for getting the data and for outputting the results. And the implementations folder at the moment contains our sequential implementation. Here you can add your own, so either OpenEP or OpenACC. It contains an external dependencies folder, which at the moment contains only the um, Google test platform that we need in order to run the uh, unit test that we have so far. And we have a validation part of the repository. Uh, the test folder contains the, the unit test for the given code. The tasks folder contains two input files, one very small one that we call debug, and it has um, seven arrays, each array uh, with um, maybe 11 uh, cells and three levels, so with 33 elements. This is usually mostly used for debugging. If you have, if you did some sort of loop reordering or something and you just quickly want to see if uh, the code is still correct, that, that can be used. And also we provide a larger file um, where the arrays have uh, roughly 11,000 elements. Uh, we can also provide larger files once you have the task completed and the results are correct with these files. Just ask us and we can provide larger files for, for, for performance evaluation. There's also another folder called reference results, which contains the um, output files associated with the input ones. You can use this to compare your results against a reference file and see if the code is still correct after the optimizations that you performed and also the scripts folders that at the moment I think it contains only the batch file to submit a job to Levante CPU node. You will also need a Levante GPU submitter once you have the code, plus some more scripts that you, you will need to write in order to compile your codes with whatever combination of compilers and flex you want. So um, we divided the challenge into two parts. So the parallelization task and the optimization task. The parallelization task, uh, you will see it's pretty straightforward. So you can have a look at the main CPP, which um, calls Grapple, in this case, the sequential, but okay, it will call your implementation. And there are three loops that can be parallelized. Um, this is like an, an initial starting point. Of course, you can rewrite the algorithm completely. You can um, change it as much as you want, but this is an entry point that you can start with. And the optimization tasks uh, are that after you, you have an implementation and the results are correct, you can try to optimize it in terms of performance. And for that, you can do all kinds of things like loop reordering, collapsing, um, maybe minimizing some critical regions because it's not going to be straightforward. You just put these directives and the code will work. You will need to also add some a critical region at some point. Um, in some points, you will see that it's important um, that we should maintain the um, the sequentiality of the levels, for instance. So it, it's not going to be out of the box, but there will be some challenges. Clearly, you can also optimize the data structures in order to uh, optimize the cache utilization, and you can also uh, optimize the CPU to GPU memory transfers. And how to run the code. So for, for Levante, it's a very easy setup. You need to load these three uh, things. First of all, the NetCDF, that we, the library that we use for reading and, and writing the files. Uh, GCC, at the moment, uh, I think it's GCC 11.2. You can also use a different version of GCC if you have it in your uh, local copy of spec, but you have to also instruct us to use that when we validate your results. And CDO, which is a tool that we use for uh, validation, and I will briefly uh, explain to you how to use that in a second. For building the project, uh, we use CMake. At the moment, since only the sequential backend is there, um, we, we have to uh, choose it as the main implementation. But once you add your implementation, there will be sequential and your implementation. And it's good to have two because you can also validate um, some performance or some, some metrics against the sequential one. The enable single flag will say if the operations will be done using floats or double. By default, it will use double precision, but uh, again, for um, 
validation, we will also need uh, the code to run in single precision. And then provide the build folder and the source, source folder and then see make build. Or running and validate the results. Then, uh, so the build will create a bin directory and with an executable that is called Graupel. And um, you just have to invoke this executable on a given input, in this case, maybe on one of the tasks. Um, and the, the, the code will, will run on, on this input. And then we can use the CDO, which is the climate data operators, which is a tool developed by Max Planck that compares scientific data. And usually it works with NetCDF files, uh, which is a scientific uh, notation for, again, scientific arrays. And for CDO, we only use three operators. So diff v, info and, and sub, and I will show you in a second how to use it. If the results are expected to be, be to be bit identical, which we would expect in case you run it on the CPU, then if you run the command CDO diff v uh, between your and, and pass your output, so output dot nc is the output that was created by your implementation, and compare it against the reference result for this specific uh, build. In this case, we compare it with the sequential double output that you will find in the repository. The CDO diff will show as it is it here. So it compared um, 156,800 uh, uh, values from 14 variables. So this means from two files, each file with seven arrays over two time steps, and the results are identical. You, you don't see any difference. This is how you interpret that your results are bit identical to the, refer, uh, to the reference. When the results are not bit identical, and this can happen if you run the code on the GPU because different mathematical libraries are used. Uh, maybe the compilers use different optimization flags like by default, like um, fuse multiply adds and, and things like that. You might see some differences. And in this case, the uh, CDO diff V will show something like this. So for each array, we see uh, a maximum uh, a maximum relative and absolute difference. These are more difficult to interpret and because the values are very small, even if here it says the difference of 93%, the results can still be correct. So how to interpret this? It, in, in this case, we run a second command and this is CDO info n minus sub, which subtracts one of the um, net your arrays from the NetCDF file from the other file. So you will get a difference, minimum, mean, and maximum difference while subtracting one array from, from the other array. So if this the results will show something like this, and all the values you see here are below a threshold, in this case, maybe 10 to the power of minus 11 or minus 10, so the limit of the double precision, then you could accept the results as, let's say, acceptable. But again, this should happen only if you run on GPU and you compare with CPU data. For CPU, we kind of expect bit identical results or a very good reason why the results are not bit identical. Not sure if your results are correct or not or how to use this, please just contact us uh, via Slack. Uh, also, uh, if you are at the point where you get correct results with the, the, the files that we provide, and you want to start evaluating and you want to use larger files, just again, get in touch with us and we can provide larger files um, to test the performance evaluation. Now, what are we going to use for evaluation? So each team will have to submit at the end uh, some, some things for, for evaluation. Submit means so they, they should give us access to their associated working directory on Levante. Obviously, the path to the implementation, in this case, the implementation folders, OpenMP or OpenACC, whatever you have to do. Uh, then you have to provide some scripts on how to build your code for CPU and for GPU, but for both correctness and performance. Uh, I want to detail on this point because I think it's important to understand that we need four build, at least four build commands. So uh, one for C, two for CPU and GPU, and uh, multiplied by uh, correctness and performance, because there are two different things. If you build for correctness, then you have to have obviously no optimizations. So you compile my, maybe with minus O zero flag, 
But when you compile for performance, then you need at least uh, all three optimization flag and plus some extra flags. And the results will differ a little bit because there are some, like fuse multiply adds, it's one of the things that it's automatically added when minus all three is, is uh, set. So the results will not be completely identical. So we need these scripts from you because you might have discovered some great flags that you get great performance with, or you might use a specific compiler uh, and you have to load it from somewhere or things like that. And without these scripts, we cannot actually evaluate your, your work because we cannot manually run all this implementation at the end. We also need some slurm logs, maybe to confirm the result, a list of optimizations that you did, um, and of course the pl plots to confirm the performance results. I think the plots will also be, and the list of optimization will also be part of the presentation that you will have to make at the end to let us know exactly what you did with the code. Uh, op optional, you can also provide maybe profiler analysis output or interpretation. Let's say you, you had an implementation, you ran a pro profiler, and then you realize that um, there are some bottlenecks and how you solved it. That could also be interesting, or some experience report for using the OpenMP or OpenACC, which we, we can use as input for the compiler um, developers. In respect to grading, so the code is going to be evaluated on Levante, and we are going to run the sequential version that is found in the repository, and then your implementation on a new file that you will not get. It's going to be a large NetCDF file, and we're going to test for two things. First of all, the code compiles. That's really important. Using the commands that you provide, maybe you have some tricks or some compilation flags. Just let us know what we need to run. Uh, and runs correctly on both CPU and GPU. Correctly means that, again, we expect bit identical results for CPU or a very good reason why it isn't. Uh, and for, for GPU, um, I think we would expect maybe some differences, but maximum uh, 10 to the power of minus 11. If these are larger than this, then the code is not exactly correct. You have some bugs somewhere. The other 50% of the, the points you will get to when we run the code and we time it. So if the code is obviously faster than a sequential version, then it's great, you, you get the points. Um, by by default, it will, you would say that it's, it can be faster because if you put a parallel, it will clearly be faster, but um, there will be some uh, critical regions and it's important how you handle that because on, on files that can have like 20 million entries or so, they can also be very cost costly. So um, don't assume that only if you had a pragma somewhere, the code will just be faster regardless of um, the configurations that we run with. And you can also get some bonus points if for read code readability, um, for increased portability, for instance, if you can also run it on different architectures in, in your compute center, like vector machines or, I don't know, something more exotic, and you can show us some logs and some performance that can also give you some bonus points. Uh, and also for documentation, if you also add uh, Doxygen documentation for the functions that you add, that can also um, add to the 20%, maximum 20% that you can get for, uh, for bonus points. And I think this is everything that we wanted to share for the beginning. Do you have questions? Anyone, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to to unmute yourself and uh, and ask. I I feel it was a lot, to, so the teams should absorb it. But let's see. So let me ask this: uh, any any of the team didn't get access to the uh, Levante cluster? Do we have any anyone here that needs some help with that? Hello, can I, uh, can I ask, I can use OpenMP to implement GPU, to, to implement GPU coding. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? We didn't hear too good. The sound is too low. Can I, can I use OpenMP to implement, to improve code uh, in GPU coding? Yes, you need um, uh, an open. Uh, um, um, so, so the the GPU part in OpenMP came with 4.0 or something like that. 
so maybe six years ago. So there are directives to ensure that the code will be run on device. Uh, you will need a compiler available for that, and we can also provide the link here. Okay, thank you. But yes, you can. Are there any other questions? Uh, I see a question in the chat. So for bonus task, can we use CUDA to optimize performance? Um, what do you mean by that? So you have parts in your code with CUDA or? Because you can use like CUDA compiler, but is this what you meant? So just the compiler to be CUDA because you, you will need CUDA compiler, right? By writing CUDA kernels, no. So the task is using directive programming. So you have to use OpenMP or OpenACC. You can use CUDA compilers, of course, because behind the hood, you will use CUDA compilers, but not custom CUDA. Hello, uh, I have another question. Can I use yes, please. Thread? Can I use pre-thread in my coding? Or I can only use OpenMP to implement the code? Uh, can you please, please repeat the question? Uh, can I use pre-thread pre to in the code? You can I use pre-thread in the code? A pre-thread. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no. So I only can use OpenMP. Uh, yes, based on the team that you're part, OpenMP or OpenACC. Okay. I think the yeah. Thank you. No, I don't think so. So the goal here would be to gain portability, and P thread. I don't think it can run on GPU out of the box, does it? Okay, any other question? Yeah, I see another question. Pairs of performance between teams. Um, I don't think so, but maybe the team that gets the best performance can get some extra points from the um, bonus part of the competition. So from those 20% that are, let's say, extra. So we have another question on the Slack. Uh, one of the universities doesn't have access, but we can handle this later. Um, I, um, Panos and Georgiana, I added you to all the team channels. Okay. So uh, they may have specific questions uh, on yep. the Slack. Um, we can uh, try to address it. I'm, yep. I, what I think is that this is a lot of, you know, a lot of information as a start. Um, we may want to have another session maybe in one month or just continue with the Slack. I just think uh, that the team didn't really start yet. Then as they you know, get into it, they will, they will have more issues or more questions yes. and they can contact us. Um, if we want, we can uh, also create a specific channel for that, but we can, we can discuss this, uh, you know, discuss it later as, as you want. Um, <clears throat> So uh, any anyone, if you have additional questions, just uh, you know put it on the Slack. Uh, and then when you you know when you get that, don't hesitate to contact us for any any problem that you encounter. Don't if you are stuck, you know just don't don't tell uh, you know stuck. You know we'll we'll try to help you as much as we can. Uh, if you don't have access or anything like that, also take, let us know. Um, we'll put the table, uh, maybe uh, Georgiana, can you put again the the slide with the table? 
which team um, gets uh, which task. Yes, and I can also put it in the wiki. Yeah, and we'll maybe, put it also in the wiki. And maybe also I can put the presentation as well in the wiki. Maybe people can have a look. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can uh, put the presentation in the wiki. Uh, we can also, you know, just share it on the Slack. All, all the options, so we'll get it. So uh, we divide, uh, you know, just to emphasize that we divided the teams to two, 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 you know, there are two tasks, and uh, we divided the teams to two based on the alphabetically. And some teams will uh, need to implement the OpenMP, the other one to op open AC via OpenACC. And um, uh, do we want to go over the the task and the you know the wiki pages? You all know about the wiki pages, right? Uh, if you um, haven't read it or if you haven't noticed that, let me know. Uh, we have a link to that on the website, and you should uh, you should get you, you should be able to see it. If you checked it uh, like long time ago, please recheck it because we made a lot of edits recently. Uh, so make sure that you read the latest uh, versions of that, and we'll add this table also there. Um, uh, so yeah, I, uh, I also want to add something uh, based on the first question that we got. So yeah. here in the slides, I show you how to compile the project as it is right now, so with the sequential version. For the offloading, you will need a compiler able to do offloading. Uh, I will also put a link to that in the um, wiki page, but you can also build one yourself with spec because you can choose whatever compiler you want, or GCC, or maybe LLVM, or NVIDIA, or whatever you want. But, but, but we can also put a link to something that is already installed, so you can use that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have another. I have a question on my side. Uh, did we decide how they submit their uh, code and results? Um, in the previous years and also this year, we'll have like a team folder and uh, one drive. But if it's easier for you that they would share with you in a different way, like send uh, send you a link to their Git or just put the code in the Levantine and send yeah, you, you know just it. let you know where where it is or some exactly. some. Uh, I guess putting the so, code on Levante should be enough because we can access it from there. Yeah. Uh, they just have to provide us the link where we should have a look. Um, and also okay. maybe, I, I think they will have to have a, a presentation at the end. Yeah. So maybe the plots and some informations that yeah. are here can also be added to those uh, slides that we're going to present. Okay. So at the end, we're going to have like a team interview that the team are yeah. going to uh, present their work for all the work that they have, it's like about 45 minutes. So should have enough time to discuss what you did on the coding challenge and the other applications. And um, um, Georgiana, let's discuss later. We can either, you know, ask them to, I can ask them to create a form, you know, I can create a quick form with, uh, with uh, you know, to submit the links mm -hmm. so we can have it easy easy in, in oh, excel mm -hmm. yep. something like that and if we need uh, them to send a result or something so we need to uh, tell them how to you know create maybe file names same file name or something like that so you know each team will um, build it differently or something so it will just be easy for you to understand what they did you understand what i'm yes. saying so yes, something yes, yes. like uh, structure of the of the folder where they put the results we can call it like uh, you know icon results or something like that and then some structure uh, we can discuss it later we yes. we have time we have still have time for that uh, we'll update the teams uh, later on on the you know how to submit exactly mm -hmm. um i think that's it and i have no other question on my side and um, i hope you you will enjoy it you will learn something out of it. You have the opportunity to, um, you know, practice real, real life, real, real application, and what scientists are doing these years. And I uh, hope you enjoy it and you learn out of it. And um, uh, again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Uh, ask us on the channels, email, whatever. We'll, we'll try to help you uh, whenever we can. Okay. Yes. Um, 
So I think that's it. Thank you everyone for for uh, you know for joining us. Uh, I will put the recording later on on the website and I will send you on the Slack and we'll put the presentation on the wiki and uh, on the Slack so you can yes. uh, refer to that uh, later on. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.